Listen to part of a lecture in a psychology class. One study on aging suggests that the key to a longer life might be the way you think about yourself as you get older. That is, how you see your own aging. The researchers found that people who view aging positively live longer than people who view it negatively. This study began 26 years ago and took place in a small town in the Midwest. The participants were 640 men and women who were 50 to 90 years old at the time. The subjects were asked to agree or disagree with statements about aging. For example, statements like, as you get older, you become less useful, and older people can't learn new skills. The data showed that respondents with the most positive attitudes survived a median of 22 years after their initial interview, while those with negative views lived just 15 years, a difference of 7 years. What is the speaker's main point? Listen to part of a talk given by an academic advisor. A bachelor's degree in engineering is the generally accepted educational requirement for most entry-level engineering jobs. In a typical four-year engineering program, the first two years are spent studying basic sciences, mathematics, physics, chemistry, and introductory engineering, and the humanities, social sciences, and English. The last two years are devoted to specialized engineering courses. Some programs offer a general engineering curriculum, letting students choose a specialty in graduate school or to acquire one later on the job. Several engineering schools have formal arrangements with liberal arts colleges. Programs, for example, where a student spends three years in a liberal arts college studying a pre-engineering subject and a couple years in an engineering school and then, well, then re receives a bachelor's degree from each school. Now, most engineers have some training beyond the bachelor's degree. An advanced degree is desirable for promotion or is necessary to keep up with new technology. Graduate training is essential for most teaching and research positions. Now, a number of colleges and universities offer five-year master's degree programs, offering an accelerated, intensive program of study. Some schools, particularly the state technical schools, have five- or six-year cooperative programs where students coordinate classroom study with practical work experience. These programs are popular because in addition to gaining useful job experience, students can finance part of their education. Number two. What is the speaker mainly discussing? Number three. How does the speaker organize the information that he presents? Listen to part of a talk in a health class. RSI, repetitive strain injury, is probably the fastest growing job-related illness. We hear about RSI so much today because of high-speed keyboard technology. Repetitive strain injury, also called repetitive motion syndrome, is a real problem for people who sit at the computer all day. RSI is brought on by doing the same movements with the arms and hands over and over again all day long. This type of injury, RSI, it's, it's been a problem for a long time for violinists, typists, mechanics, construction workers, anyone whose job involves repeated wrist movements. My mother used to work in the lab at St. Peter's, and, and she got something like that. She worked there for around 15 years, and it got to the point where she couldn't handle the instruments anymore. You could hear her fingers crack and pop when she moved them. Hmm. Your mother may have had RSI, a serious case from the sound of it. RSI affects different people differently. Some people get an inflammation of the sheathing around the tendons in the hand called tendonitis. The inflammation makes your fingers painful and hard to straighten. It's possible your mother's problem was tendonitis. A more serious condition that a lot of workers develop is carpal tunnel syndrome. And that's when the nerves that go through the wrist to the hand are pinched by swollen tissue. The swelling causes a numbness or tingling sensation in the hand, and pain shoots up from the wrist, either up the arm or down into the hand. The pain can be so bad at night, it wakes you up. 
Number 4. What aspect of RSI does the instructor mainly discuss? Number 5. How does the instructor develop the topic of RSI? 